Hey guys, it's Tia, welcome to the video. So a while back I talked about digital products that sell on Etsy, fonts being one of them, and then I made a video showing how I create my fonts step by step. So in that video, I used Adobe Illustrator with the font self extension, but those tools are expensive, especially without a student discount, which I happen to have. So in this video, I'll be talking about free and much cheaper ways to make fonts, as well as some tips on how you can sell them so you can make some passive income like this. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any of the companies I mentioned in this video, except for Sale Samurai, just FYI. Like the video if you find it helpful, subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get notified when I post new videos and let's get started. So the first method to make fonts for free is using a website called Calligrapher. So this site lets you generate a template for the characters you want to create which you can download and print or open in any editing program. So once you draw the artwork, you can photograph or scan the template and upload it to the website. Then it will create the font for you in a TTF format, which you can install. This is a great way to create basic fonts for free, but they do offer a pro version if you wanna create more advanced fonts where you can adjust things like kerning and add ligatures as well. This is still much cheaper than getting the Adobe apps with font self though, so I'd say it's worth it for the extra features if making fonts is something you wanna take seriously. So Calligrapher is great for creating handwriting style fonts. These sell well on many marketplaces, but what if you wanna make fonts that are more geometric? FontArc is a completely free font building tool that you can access really easily in your browser and it lets you make fonts using the pen tool like you would find in Illustrator. So you can pretty much create any vector shapes you want. The pen tool definitely takes a while to get used to, but the website has a lot of tutorials for beginners, which is really helpful. And once you're done, you can just export the font as an OTF file. It's currently in the beta testing stage and it's completely free. There's no pro version or anything like that. Another great flexible design tool for creating fonts, which is completely free and actually open source is Bird Font. This one you have to download, but it works in a similar way. So you can create the shapes with the pen tool. You can also import individual glyphs from software like Inkscape and Illustrator as SVG files. It does have tutorials, although they're not as extensive as a font arc, but I think the user interface is a bit more intuitive. But as I said, BirdFont is an open source software, so there's a greater chance it will stay free. A similar and slightly simpler version of the software is Glyphor Studio, which is an in-browser software that lets you export as OTF or SVG files. And it also lets you import pre-made SVGs from Inkscape and Illustrator as well. But what if you just can't handle the pen tool and you want something easier to work with? Fontstruct is an incredibly easy tool to use for beginners. You just build each character using different shaped bricks. Maybe at first glance, it seems like you can't do much with these simple shapes, but you'd be surprised at the variety of fonts you can make with this completely free tool you can access directly in your browser. A similar and even simpler tool is the BitFont Maker 2. Again, a free in-browser tool which you can use to make these types of pixel fonts like you see in you know, video games, but you can get a lot of variety out of this tool as well if this is a style of font that you like. All right, so I've just listed a lot of font making tools that you can use for free or very cheap. So take your pick. You can really create any font you want with these tools. Now let's get onto the selling side of things and what's expected when you upload your fonts for sale on marketplaces. Now firstly, exporting. So there's four main file types people tend to export as, which are OTF, TTF, SVG, and PNG. OTF or open type font and TTF you can install on your computer and actually use. TTF is just an older version of open type font, so you can convert OTF to TTF or the other way around using Font Squirrel for free. I do this anyway, but if a site only asks to upload one version, I'd pick the OTF file. This is really the only file people expect. Like if you're uploading somewhere like Graphic River, they're not gonna ask you for PNGs. The OTF or the TTF file is completely fine. Some people wanna use fonts for crafts, embroidering or cricket, so they want separate image or vector files of your fonts. Illustrator lets you export separate assets as SVGs and PNGs, but if this is something you wanna do and you don't have Illustrator, you can use Photopea, which is a free in-browser editing software to export the characters separately 
in whatever format you want. When selling fonts, I take the OTF, the TTF, the zip file with the PNGs and the other zip file with the SVGs and I zip it all into one big file and I upload that for sale. So there's a lot of digital product marketplaces you can sell fonts on. The more you upload to, the better really, but I say there's four main ones that are worth your time and these are Etsy, Creative Market, Graphic River and Creative Fabrica. Now I say Etsy is good for digital products in particular because their fees are comparatively low. So we've got that 6.5% transaction fee plus some other fees which comes around to around you know, 8% of your total price with uh, the 20 cent listing fee as well. Although just as a reminder, you can get 40 free listings if you sign up with my link below for an Etsy account. So even though these are pretty high fees if you're selling physical products, which already have a pretty slim profit margin, they're not bad at all if you're selling digital products. And on top of the fact that you can upload as much as you want, it gives you much more room to spend money on paid ads if that's something you wanna do. But don't feel like you have to though to get sales because I haven't used any paid ads so far. As long as you understand how to use SEO to your advantage, you should be able to drive decent organic traffic. I've made lots of videos on this already, which you can find in my Etsy playlist link down below. So in these videos, I use a tool called Sales Samurai to help with this. You can get a three day free trial using my link below and 20% off using my code tier 20. Listing images are pretty important on Etsy for catching the customer's attention. And for fonts, people typically make sort of a cover image showcasing the font and then add product mockups. So basically ideas about how your font can be used, for example, on clothing or on a brochure, wedding invitations, web design, there's a lot of different possibilities. These help the customer visualize how they're gonna use your font and that makes them more likely to buy it. Another point I should bring up about Etsy is that if you're selling at too low of a price, so like less than $3, the 20 cent listing fee is going to cut into your profit pretty heavily. Now, if you're just listing individual fonts, it's likely you will have to price them low to make sales unless the font is you know, really good. And by that, I mean like multiple variations and ligatures. Um, you know, this is the kind of standard we're looking at here. If you're not willing to put that much time into one font or you know, you're not a professional font designer, then the types of fonts that have a higher chance of selling than these individual fonts on Etsy are font packs like these. Now, obviously you don't have to make you know, 50, 100 fonts before you can bundle them all together and make your first listing. You can just start uploading each individual font after you've made it. And once you have like enough fonts for a bundle, say like 10 fonts, you can upload that bundle as well. Now you can put the link to the bundle listing as the first link in the description of all the individual font listings you've already made. So they're basically like mini advertisements for the bundle, which is what you want people to buy because that's the higher ticket item. Now, likewise, in the description of the bundle, you can link each of the individual fonts in that bundle. So if a customer likes one font in the bundle, but they can't afford the entire thing or they just want one font, then they have that option as well. Plus it makes it very clear what fonts are in there so a customer doesn't end up buying a font twice. Then when you've built up multiple bundles, you can merge bundles together into these sort of mega bundles and then charge them even more for those. This way you sort of max out the number of listings you have for the amount of work you've done creating the fonts and the more real estate you have on the Etsy platform essentially. So you also have something at every price point. So it gives the customer a lot of options depending on what they can afford. Something else you should remember to put in your description is licensing or an EULA, which stands for end user license agreement, which just means giving people permission how to use your font because that's now your intellectual property. Now, as someone that buys digital products myself, I personally find it annoying when sellers give you like five different options for licensing or you have to pay extra for commercial use. So I allow free unlimited commercial use on all my digital products keep it simple but this is really up to you you know if you think your font is gonna make it on TV or advertisements then I don't know it might be worth it but I make sure to mention that resale in the original file formats or as a digital product is strictly prohibited as well as editing or tracing the typeface and then reselling that now this might seem like a bit of an extra unnecessary thing to mention but apparently Typefaces are not actually protected by copyright in US law, only the font is. Now, you might be saying, well, that's kind of weird and confusing because a font is part of a typeface. Like, for example, Helvetica regular 0.9 or whatever is a font which is part of the Helvetica typeface or font family. Now I'm not a lawyer, but what I'm interpreting this as is they're saying it's illegal for someone to just resell the original OTF or TTF file, um, but they may be able to trace or edit the file and then sell that. Now, obviously this is different between different locations, even between states. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, this is okay for you to do, obviously. Um, the law on fonts is 
very complicated but as long as you make it clear how you want your font to be used then you've done your bit on that another way to increase the amount of money and traffic you can get from your fonts is by uploading them onto more marketplaces. But the way you sell things varies on each platform, so you may need to get your font approved. For example, Graphic River has a minimum characters list and requirements for a cover image, so make sure you follow those. Their approval time usually takes around two days at most. Um, also, certain digital marketplaces might give you the option to sell exclusively on their site for higher royalties, which means you'll get a higher percentage of each sale as profit, but I would advise against this because the additional profit you'll get by uploading to more marketplaces is probably gonna swamp that tiny bit of extra money you get by going exclusive. So that's how you can create fonts for free and some tips on how you can sell them. Drop a like if you found that helpful and subscribe for more videos. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.